All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, if you've been following on or following my latest sequence of videos here, um, the Ballot Pals and I and the Blotro Discord, we recently completed uh, another one of these super high scoring, super optimized runs. And you know, a little bit of story time here. Uh, I get you know, basically three kinds of comments on my videos. And so number one, you know, people say, wow, amazing, cool, crazy. Uh, you know, it really makes me smile when I see those. Uh, number two type of comment I get, uh, hey, why did you do this thing here? That was a little bit weird. Or why didn't you do this other thing here? Um, and it's pretty easy for me to go and just answer those, you know, on the spot. Uh, you know, question here, question there. Uh, the third type of comment that I get, people say, hey, I like when you explain what's going on. Uh, and so, you know, these sort of random indecipherable moves, if you tell me why you're doing these, then uh, I, it's easier for me to appreciate all of what's happening. And so that's what the plan is. The plan is we're going to, for this high score run, we're gonna explain everything uh mostly you know we're gonna explain enough stuff that you can really appreciate what's going on and so okay before we get into the actual gameplay itself by the way if you don't know what i'm talking about you should go watch the run before we get into the breakdown and the analysis here um but we should talk about uh why this particular seed? How did we come up with this seed that we decided was going to be the one that gives us the big high score? And, you know, to do that, we should also point out, um, I did a lot of the routing myself, but there were, you know, about half a dozen other of these Discord users who contributed probably in total more than 100 hours. Uh, combined uh, these other people and so a lot of people put a lot of time into making this happen and then in the original uh, gameplay footage uh, I have all of those credits in the description all right the way the seed searcher works we have this program that searches through all of the possible seeds um, and then you know picks out the ones that fit certain criteria you decide ahead of time what you want to filter for. What are you looking for? And so maybe what you want to do is, okay, give me only seeds that have the Dusk Joker showing up at some point. You know, if I want to get a high score, I want to have Dusk showing up. Give me only the seeds that have the Polychrome Aura um, so that I can get a Polychrome card and then I can, you know, turn into glass and I can make copies and then that's going to be uh, my polyglass cards with combined with my dusk for my high score you know give me all of the seeds that have that combination and what the seed searcher does is it checks one by one every seed you, you until you tell it to stop well it says okay we'll look at this seed does it fit our criteria if no we'll throw it out next one also no let's throw it out next one also no let's throw it out and then eventually okay i found a seed that checks all the boxes okay here you go look i found one and then it'll tell us and i'll add it to a list and then over time as we're searching through more seeds one at a time we'll get this longer and longer list fitting our criteria so let's talk about the criteria here what we were searching for all right, in order to get uh, you know, our high, super high score here, we wanted to get these uh, polychrome uh, aura cards. So polychrome aura from a spectral pack, that was one of our search criteria. Uh, we also wanted to get not just this dusk joker, but also this blueprint joker. And we are, you know, we've done that in the past and we have a optimized, you know, high score run uh, you know, 170 something trillion points or something like that. Uh, that was legit. That was no cheats, no glitches or anything. Uh, this time we wanted to do something a little bit more interesting. Um, and we're exploiting what we call this white whale bug. And the way the bug works is, you know, whatever protection the game has in place, preventing you from getting 
extra copies of jokers you know so when you're shopping it doesn't give you any jokers that you already have we can remove that protection possibly enabling us to get duplicates uh sort of it needs to be we're only able to find duplicates that are already sort of naturally occurring if the shop would have a duplicate then we're able to see that duplicate then we're able to buy that duplicate and so as part of our searching process we want to search for seeds that have two copies of dusk and also two copies of blueprint so we can buy uh, all of those and then you know sort of arranged like this these blueprints are both copying this dusk here and then that's going to give us you know extra copies of all of our glass and polychrome effects so we want polychrome aura we want two blueprint and two dusk another thing we were searching for uh if we go into the vouchers here uh of the vouchers the most powerful one being the telescope voucher allowing us to get uh you know a very high number of series cards very high level flush house because you know all of our glass and polychrome effects are going to be multiplying this base molt here so we want to get this number as high as possible before we apply all of our multiplicative effects on top of this this 130 times 2 times 1.5 times 2 times 1.5 and then so on there were uh you know some other criteria for the beginning of the run so sort of set up our economy allow us to actually obtain these jokers um so for example we wanted to search for seeds that had access to eight ball uh very early on in the run you know within the first couple shops uh we wanted to have an eight ball that way we can start uh you know manipulating our deck with tarot cards you know this is what the final version of it looks like um or also just using the eight ball to generate money uh you know some tarot cards giving us money and so equipped with all of that search criteria then we searched all 2.2 you know it's a little bit more than 2 trillion possible seeds every single seed we searched and of those there were 300 or sorry 30,000 30,000 that fit the criteria that we were searching for and you know this 30,000 is both a lot and then also not a lot so it's not a lot in comparison to the two trillion seeds that we searched through uh you know which took more than a day of searching to run this program um and then also it's kind of a lot in the sense that you're not going to be able to play thirty thousand seeds you're not going to be able to play thirty thousand runs um and so we needed to then from our list of thirty thousand find some way of picking out which one of those was best and all right this is what we decided on we decided on you know if i have uh two copies of blueprint and if i have two copies of dusk what i need to happen is i need to have some negative jokers because if i have some negatives then i can add in extra of these multiplicative jokers i can add in a constellation i can add in a blackboard or maybe multiple constellations maybe multiple stencils for example and so from our list of 30,000 now let's find which one of those has the most negatives let's rank them by how many negatives that show up and so this seed here uh ended up being the only one the only one out of two trillion seeds that not only fit our criteria but also had five negatives naturally occurring in the shop five negative jokers in the shop the runner-up uh there were a couple that had four negatives but only one that had five now we said okay well maybe you know this five negatives maybe that's not the only way to go about this maybe a alternative path that we could take is instead of the most negatives we could have some polychrome jokers and you know if you have a let's say polychrome blackboard then that's going to be worth kind of as much as one and a half jokers so it's kind of similar to having a negative having an extra joker if i have this extra polychrome effect 
And so we said, okay, let's do this. Let's search for, or, you know, let's rank them by the combination number of negatives and polychrome cards that show up in the shop. There were exactly three that had a total of five negatives plus polychrome. And so one of those was this seed that had five negatives, no polychrome in the shop. There was uh, four negatives, one polychrome, and there was also three negatives, two polychrome. That was it. There was only three seeds that had uh, a total of five negatives plus polychrome. And, okay, well, of those three, which is going to be best? Well, if I have all of these negatives so that I can have these extra jokers, what jokers do I actually want? Well, the ones that I want are going to be the multiplicative jokers, right? So I want to have uh, Blackboard. I want to have Stencil, possibly. It's not my favorite. It's not my first choice, but, you know, it could work. Uh, Constellation is going to be the best. Uh, loyalty card is also fine. You know, loyalty card even better than Blackboard. And so, how many multiplicative jokers actually show up in these three seeds? You know, we have a high number of negatives. How many multiplicative jokers can we find? And it turned out that the four negatives plus one polychrome, three negatives plus two polychrome, those two seeds did not have very many multiplicative jokers showing up. Which meant that this one that had the five negatives also had a high number of multiplicative jokers. And you can see here, we've got, you know, not just one but two constellations, not just one but two stencils, and an extra blackboard. We got a lot of these extra multiplicative jokers that we want. And so that's how we decided, okay, this is gonna be the one. This is the seed. Uh, you know, I passed all of our search criteria of the 30,000 that we ended up with. It had the most stuff, most negatives, most multiplicative jokers. And then we can do stuff like this. All right, now, that's the stuff that we were searching for on purpose. There were a few other things that happened, uh, you know, somewhat naturally uh, that were kind of exciting. And so you'll notice here I have not five negatives, but I actually have six negatives. And the reason for that is there were five negatives naturally occurring in the shop. And there were additional spectral packs that had additional copies of uh, ectoplasm. So ectoplasm allows you to turn your jokers into negatives, which means if I have two ectoplasm, that's two extra negatives on top of the five that I already had. That's, you know, we weren't uh, filtering for that. We weren't searching for that. It just so happened that this seed also had that extra stuff, these extra ectoplasm, these extra negatives. Cool. Also, uh, you know, when we start using the Wheel of Fortune, uh, the first Wheel of uh, second Wheel of Fortune, the second Wheel of Fortune gives you this holographic here, this holographic stencil. And then the fourth wheel of fortune gives you polychrome and so this is something that we talked about potentially searching for okay maybe the polychrome doesn't have to come from the shop it could come from the wheel instead uh, but we determined well the probability of that happening is too small it's too rare uh, you know let's not bother searching for that filtering for that we don't want to throw out you know good seeds if they don't have this polychrome wheel so it just so happened that this seed, our one in two trillion, also had wheel number four giving us polychrome. And then also wheel number five giving us polychrome again. So two extra negatives, two extra polychrome. Definitively, this is the one. This is the seed that is better than all of the rest uh, by a mile. Uh, and you know you can play around with this one if you want all right so you know equipped with all of that uh now the plan is we'll go back to the beginning and we'll sort of walk through this whole process uh you know every step that went into making this happen this run uh, i'll say video editing is a skill 
it is a skill that I do not have. And so I'm going to do all of this in just one take. Uh, no, not really. This is, I don't know. I've already done a, a bunch of these takes already and I already got messed up, tripped up in different places. Uh, but you know, there's going to be no cuts. There's going to be no edits. So, you know, bear with me. Uh, you'll get whatever you get. Uh, I'll try my best. I will let this run out here. Man, I gotta say, uh, half speed after playing on four times speed, so it's one eighth as fast. This is agonizing. Again. Alright. This is, is that a hundred trillion or something like that? Yeah, so it's, you know, something like a hundred trillion and then plus ten from this holographic. Uh, and so, you know, the order of these doesn't really matter. I could put the holographic on the right side here or on the left side. It doesn't matter. All that matters is these multiplicative things. Okay. There we go. This uh, 87, uh, not trillion, not quadrillion, but quintillion points, I guess. All right, let's take it back to the beginning. Oh no, I messed up. I gotta do this. Oh, there we go. All right. So to start off here, we're gonna do some shuffler manipulation stuff here. So swap some cards around before I discard them. We'll do a swap here. We'll move some threes over here, discard them. Uh, we'll do some swaps here, do some discards. And then with these twos, I'll exchange them. And then I'm gonna play, here's four of a kind. I'll explain that in a second. There we go. So, you know, here's here's the deal with the, the shuffler manipulation. Um, I've said this in, you know, I have a sort of tutorial video on this. Um, the idea is whatever cards you play, they end up somewhere in the next round. You know, you get some different shuffle in the next round. And the order in which you play your cards has some influence, has some effect on what order your cards appear in the next round. And so, you know, let's say I play a straight flush, you know, this eight, seven, six, five, four. And then, you know, in the next round, those same cards will show up somewhere. And what I can do before I play this hand, I can, you know, maybe take this five and then swap it with the four. And what that will do is in the next round, wherever there used to be a four of hearts, now there's a five of hearts. Wherever there used to be a five of hearts, now there's a four of hearts. I can swap those, you know, just two at a time. Or, you know, I can do something a little bit more radical. I can take, you know, this eight and slide it all the way down over here. And so what that's doing is where there used to be a four, now there's an eight. The, where there used to be a five, the four ends up where the five is, the five ends up where the six is, the seven ends up where the eight is. You know, all of these things are shuffled around. Um, or, you know, I can do something a little bit more exotic like this when I play these cards. Same thing when you discard cards. And so that's, you know, what we're doing in the first round there. And you'll see it a lot in, you know, kind of all of my videos, but, you know, throughout the run here, just generally moving cards around to affect how our cards are going to be dealt in the future. Um, and so with the uh, Spectral Pack here, with the Immolate, we did some manipulation in the first round. Uh, if you just kind of go in, uh, and play the same four of a kind twos without any shuffler manipulation, the immolate will delete an eight. So I moved an eight out of the way so that I won't get deleted. Actually, I moved uh, the nines in so that the nines would get deleted instead of the eight. You know, that was one of the things that I was setting up there. Um, also, you know, setting up uh, for the future, you know, not just the next round, 
but the next next round and the round after that you know all of the cards appearing in the order that i want you know this crazy manipulation all right uh next thing that we're going to do we're going to pick up the fool card here and then that's it i'll tell you why later but this fool ends up being important all right, in the next round, uh, you know, checking the notes here, we've got eight of spades. I want it over here, seven and four. We're gonna swap those and then maybe do something like this. Um, so, okay, one thing that we're doing here specifically, uh, you know, I'm not gonna tell you what every move is for, but I'm gonna tell you generally what I'm trying to go for. Um, in the future, I want to be playing eights uh, for my uh, eight ball. So I'm moving this eight so that I'll have it in the appropriate place in the future. Wherever there used to be this 10 of hearts, now there's gonna be an eight instead. Uh, also, uh, I'm setting up, you know, when I eventually get the spectral pack that gives me the polychrome aura, I want the polychrome aura on a specific card. And so by shuffling things around i can maneuver that polychrome aura to be on the specific card that i actually want so that's part of what we're doing here in general not necessarily here specifically uh, but i am you know i want this eight uh let's see here these go eight over here i guess why not uh, four goes on the right, seven goes here. And then we'll swap the six and the seven before we play, here's the aces. And so in round one, we play four of a kind twos. In round two, four aces um, or four eights, four nines, four tens, uh, any of those four of a kinds will work. Uh, in the end, we do want to get the telescope going and we want to get our flush house on the telescope. So I'm playing four of a kind now because I won't be playing four of a kind later. Um, so that's, you know, why I chose to go for four of a kind instead of going for something else, you know, possibly setting up a straight flush or something like that. Um, in the first round, uh, I could have gone for a full house in the first round, but I chose instead of a full house to do the four of a kind because I want to be able to make full houses later with my eights for my eight ball. All right, here in the shop, we're offered the telescope and the delayed gratification. Uh, Originally, when I did this uh, sort of an earlier version of this run, knowing that this delayed gratification shows up here, you can, in the previous round, you can re-roll to get the delayed gratification earlier, and then if you get it earlier, then you can get the money from it. Um, the one problem with that is if I have the delayed gratification, if I'm trying to get my value out of it, I want to be playing without discarding, and if I'm not discarding, then in each round, I get to see less cards. And so the way the shuffler manipulation works is you can swap cards that you see, right? So if I see two aces, I can swap them. If I see a 10 and an ace, I can swap them. You cannot swap cards that you don't see. And so if I'm you know, trying to win each round in one hand or two hands or something like that, for my delayed gratification money, then it makes the shuffler manipulation much harder. And so, you know, in the round two that you saw, it was not possible for me to win in one hand. The best that I could do was win in two hands, you know, through different possibilities. Or I think I did find one path where I was able to win in one hand without discards. So just, you know, your delta hand, you play it, you win but then that made it too hard or perhaps impossible to set up the next round the way that I needed to set it up. So I said, okay, well, we'll wait on the gratification. Uh, instead of re-rolling for it, we'll just buy it later. Also, the 
if you re-roll and get this gratification earlier, you get your eight ball earlier, and then you also get your blueprint earlier. And you might think, okay, well, that's great. Earlier eight ball, I can do more eight ball stuff. Earlier blueprint, I can do more eight ball blueprint combination stuff. A problem is, I want this fool, and I'll tell you why later, but I want this fool, I really want this fool. And so if I get the eight ball and the uh, blueprint, then I'm not actually getting my blueprint value because I'm holding on to the fool for a while until I end up using it. And so it doesn't, we don't need the blueprint earlier. We can wait on the blueprint. Also, the blueprint in this seed ends up being negative, costing us $20, costing us all of our, you know, interest that we built up and hurting our income a lot. And so by not re-rolling, I'm able to push that $20 expense further into the future, build up more of my economy first, buy it later. At least that's what the idea is. So uh, I do have, you know, the complete run as one of my recent videos and then a week or two before that, I had sort of a half of run where I showed, you know, just the first four antes and that had this alternate path using the re-roll for gratification. Anyway, uh, this is, you know, we're in the big blind now, so if I want the telescope, I have to buy it now. And that's all that we can afford. Uh, I will point out also, uh, the second tarot card is also a fool card. And so by buying this fool, then this is not a fool. This is the next thing instead. So that gave us a skip. Um, I want to eventually uh, create a flush house using you know, some kind of suit changer. So buying this fool earlier then gives me my suit changer earlier. If I skip the fool, it'll give me the next thing. It'll give me my suit changer earlier. That is one reason for this fool. The real reason for this, uh, again, I'll tell you later. All right, going into the next round here, I want to, all right, I have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So here, this is the result of all of my shuffler manipulation. Well, one of the results. Um, by rearranging stuff in the first round, I was able to get a straight flush here. I'm able to win in one hand, no discards, full value from my delayed gratification. And we will try to do more of that kind of stuff throughout the run. Uh, before I do this, let's m maneuver the eights into the correct position like that. Somehow that is correct. And I will say this, you know, we got the spades there. Um, and we got the five, two, eight of clubs. We did not see any red cards in this round, which means any red cards that were earlier on in the run, if they show up later and I wanna try to manipulate them and I try to move them around, I have to go all the way back to the beginning and then move them around in the first round. And then they show up later on. And so one of the moves that I did with my four twos is I swapped two of the twos and that's because one of those twos never shows up again. It doesn't show up until round six, which means in order to manipulate that two, get the correct flavor of two, I need to go all the way back to the beginning and then make this swap that I don't see until round six. So that's kind of, you know, sort of how deep this shuffler manipulation stuff goes. All right, going into the shop here, since I have the gratification, I can go ahead and pick up the wasteful voucher um, and then it'll give me two bucks, you know, the same as 10 bucks giving me two interest. Um, I'm gonna pick up not just the eight ball here, but I'm gonna pick up uh, Todd. Uh, I will say the order that you buy these things matters. Um, when you get later on to the ectoplasm, the ectoplasm that's gonna give you a negative, it turns whatever the first 
or whatever the earliest joker you bought, it turns that one into a negative for some reason. That's just sort of how the uh, you know RNG decided. And so normally it would turn this gratification into a negative. If I sell this net gratification, it'll turn Todd into negative instead. If I bought the eight ball first, it'll give me a negative eight ball. At the end, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to sell the eight ball and then get uh, you know, this negative Todd as one of my scoring jokers instead. And so we got to buy the Todd first. We also have to buy the Todd here. There's another Todd that shows up later after this eight ball, but I need this to come first in order to get the negative Todd instead of a negative eight ball. All right, in the Arcana pack, All right, assuming that we, you know, shuffled things around correctly, I can do something like this. I could take the seven here, move the six here. Here I've got seven, seven, eight. I'm going to use the moon and I'm going to turn those into clubs. Uh, here's why. Uh, if I do two sevens of clubs in total, three seven of clubs, one more eight of clubs, that is my flush house. So we're going to play a pair of eights and then separately a flush house with eights. That way I use all my eights, I get my flush house, um, and then I get you know, also potentially this delayed gratification value. So I wanna do eights as my flush house, and then I also wanna do sevens. And here's why I wanna do sevens. One thing this does is it opens up the opportunity to turn my sevens into eights of clubs. Also, we have to think about what card do I want my polychrome aura to be? You know, what card do I want to make polychrome? Because I do get to pick. I get to manipulate the shuffler to give me the correct polychrome card that I want. And the one that we decided on was, I want a polychrome seven of clubs. Not necessarily this seven of clubs, but it could be this seven of clubs. It could be this seven of clubs. Um, but I want a polychrome seven of clubs so that when I turn it into glass, when I copy it, when I use strength to make a flush house, this seven then becomes a nine. So sevens and nines. You know, you could also do fives and sevens, you could do fives and nines, you could do threes and fives, but the high ones are going to be sevens and nines. It is possible maybe to, you know, get the ace and then use enough strength cards to turn it into a two, three, four, five, six, all the way up through nine. Um, technically, it's possible, but maybe it requires too many strength cards. And so, you know, you're using these strength cards and potentially fool for more strength at the cost of something else you might want to use your fool for. So we decided sevens into nines, that was best. And then, you know, with this negative Todd here combined with the dusk, uh, we're going to get a bunch of value from having this odd uh, flush house. All right, so we'll do that. Uh, yeah, let me just double check, make sure the order's correct. There we go. All right, in the next round, so here I was able to manipulate, uh, get some eights together here without having to discard. Um, one more step here. Let's take this eight of hearts and now set it up for the next round. So in this five card hand, you know, with these twos and eights, the twos end up somewhere, the eights end up somewhere. I want the fifth card and the first card to be an eight so that I draw my eights earlier. And then these twos get buried. All right, I will say, you know, as far as like trying to do this telescope stuff, you know, we have some choice about what hands we want to play. You know, we could play two pair, we could play pair, we could play flush, we could play full house. At the end of each round, we'll end each round with a flush house as one of our hands. When you get to the end of the run, your constellation is super high. You know, we've got like 4.5 times on each constellation of which we have two of them. Um, you know, we get up to times five constellation, which, and you also have, you know, just random planet cards, you know, increasing the base here, you know, level four pair, level three, two pair or something like that. 
which means whatever hand you play will be worth a ton of points. If in the end, in anti four, anti five, if I play a flush house, that'll be enough points to just one shot. And so if I'm one shotting with a full house, then I'm not able to play as many eights. I'm not able to play as many pairs. And so what we want to do is early on in the run, when we don't have any scoring, when we don't have consolation, we'll play as many full houses and as many flushes as we can. And then that way later on in the run, we'll have uh, room to play pairs, just regular pairs, low scoring pairs later if we play the full houses earlier. And so that's what, you know, part of the shuffler manipulation, uh, you know, not only do I want my eights, but I want to organize them so that I get flushes with eights, uh, straight flushes with eights. All right, uh, here I'm able to, I know that the tarot cards are going to give me a death card. And so I'm okay with having just the one eight and then I can make immediately a second one. And I want it to be that eight of clubs. Uh, and so, you know, in the first round here, that's why I played the spades and hearts so that I had the clubs left over to make a copy of. And then finally, here's the deal with the fool. So we looked at the tarot cards. We looked at the tarot cards for this run and the first time that you get a strength card happens, uh, you know, something like tarot number 60 or something like that, which means these sevens, I don't get to turn them into eights. If I want to get more eights, I have to get it through some other means other than a strength card. I'm not waiting until tarot card number 60 to get more eights. Okay, so what can we do instead? Well, if we get this death card, we can make another eight. But if you have five eights, you can still only make two pairs. You need to get six eights before you can start making three pairs. And this death card, the next one doesn't show up again until like tarot number 50 or something like that, which means I'm going to be stuck with five eights for a long time and not able to get more eights. And so the reason why we bought the fool at the beginning, even though we didn't have very much money at the beginning, we bought the fool so that I could save it for exactly this. So I can make a copy of my death card. I don't normally get another death card. This is the way that I found to get another death card. All right, as far as, uh, you know, proceeding here, I set this up. We have full house followed by a flush. All right, I don't need this world card. I can turn that into money. Uh, I have another eight here. And then here is my flush house. Before I do that, let's move this 10 over here for reasons. And here's that blueprint showing up. Notice here, because it's negative, costs us $20, costs us all of our saved up money here. And that's why, you know, we don't re-roll to get the blueprint earlier. We want to save it until we have our money saved up later on. Okay. Also, this is, you know, this happened naturally. Uh, in this seed, we said there's five negatives in the shop. What I mean by that is in the first 100 jokers, somewhere in there, there's five negatives mixed in. And in the first five jokers, we wanted both blueprint and uh, eight ball to show up in the first five jokers. So that was part of the setup. We wanted to have immolate in the first shop. We wanted to have eight ball and blueprint showing up in the first five jokers so we could get that going right away. And it just so happened that the blueprint also is naturally negative. It was kind of lucky and exciting. Uh, it does make things a little bit awkward, you know, the it costing so much money, but uh, we we're able to get that. Now, before I buy this, I will uh, go into my collection and we're going to set up the uh, duplication 
glitch here. So we'll go to, here is the blueprint, close the collection, buy the blueprint. And then this enables us to find the other blueprint later. Uh, and that's all we can afford. All right, uh, I do have to do this. So something that's like kind of awkward with the uh, shuffler manipulation. Um, like I said, you can only swap the cards that you see. And so, you know, in the previous round when I played the eights and twos, I can swap eights with twos. I can swap eights with other eights. Uh, when I played my um, flush, I can swap those cards around um what i can't do you know is swap uh eights with potentially some other cards that show up you know like this ace of clubs we didn't have an ace of clubs in the previous round uh six of spades four of spades we didn't have those in the previous round so it's not possible for me to turn those into eights so in order to get our eight ball stuff going and at the same time do the delayed gratification no discards you have to waste some hands. Um, you know, probably this is you expected. Okay, yeah, sure, we're gonna waste some hands. We're gonna play high card. Uh, I think, you know, when I first went through this, I ended up with a pair. And so I did some minor manipulation just to make this not a pair. You know, take out one of the sixes or something like that. Uh, so that this is high card instead. Okay. But then we do get, so the reason why I pulled that 10 of diamonds uh, at the end of the last round is so that I can do this. Um, I know from the tarot cards that the eight ball is going to give me another copy of the moon. And so I can hold on to that, save it for this next round to now make uh, tens and sevens here uh, with a little bit of rearrangement. There we go. So tens and sevens turning into clubs. You know, now if I look at the deck here, I've got three tens. I can make a flush house, eights and tens. I also have four sevens. I can make a flush house, eights and sevens, or, you know, tens and sevens. Um, and that's it. So I showed you, you know, at the end of the run, what the final deck looks like. It has the tens and the sevens. I don't need to make any more clubs. I'm already set up to make my flush houses. Um, one reason you might want to go for, you know, the two different sets here is if I turn my sevens into polychrome glass cards, now I don't want to play my sevens anymore. I don't want to play my glass cards anymore. So I want to have a backup tens here also if i turn my sevens into eights then if all of these are eights i need some other card to make my flush house i need tens and eights if i turn my sevens into eights um let's see here i feel like there was something else that i wanted to say here uh oh well maybe it'll come back to me later Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 that's what it was. Um, when you, like I said, with the shuffler manipulation, uh, if I end the round by playing, let's say, uh, you know, the, well, let's do this first. Let's do eights, sevens, there, just like that. I'll show you in a second. All right, I don't need this. I don't need this. I want to swap this uh eights and sixes don't need this don't need these all right here's the point that i was trying to make so when i get to the end here i've gone through most of my deck and what i've got left over is these tens and eights if I play this hand, if I play this flush house, then in the next round, I can swap a 10 with a 10. That doesn't help me. I can swap an eight with eight. That doesn't help me. Uh, what I can do is I can swap eights with tens, but if I wanna see these three tens, again, these exact three tens, I have less control over where they end up. 
because they are played together, which means they you know, either stay together or don't stay together. I have no control over that. I can't swap tens with tens. Either they end up together or they don't. But what I can do is I can play this flush house with tens and then separately play, you know, manipulate my sevens so that in the next round I play my flush house with sevens and then manipulate the tens so that in the next round I play the flush house with tens and sort of alternating there. And so that's why earlier on in this run, I moved around the sevens to set up a flush house of sevens in the future because these tens will get split up and then I won't be able to make my flush house with my tens. And so that's you know another reason why I wanna have a split here, sevens and tens for my two possible flush houses. All right, the next move we want to do, uh, let's see here, spectral pack first. Let's move our eights and swap the ace with the seven. Okay, in this spectral pack here, we've got some options. Really what we want is this aura. So with our seed searcher, we said, okay, give us uh, aura and then this aura will give us polychrome on our seven um, so the way the game sort of decides what card to put the aura on is it says okay generate a random card pick a random card in your deck and then that's going to be the one if that card shows up in the spectral pack that is the one that gets the aura but that card may or may not show up in the spectral pack, right? The spectral pack only has eight cards at a time. So maybe it picked uh, the four of diamonds and the four of diamonds didn't actually show up. So it'll say, okay, four diamonds didn't show up. Now let's pick another card at random. And it'll keep going down the list. Okay, what's the next one? What's the next one? What's the next one? Um, until it gets one that is actually in the spectral pack. And so there's kind of uh, this order of operations where maybe it's like, okay, four of diamonds, or if not four of diamonds, then six of spades, or if not six of spades, then uh, eight of hearts, or if not eight of hearts, then seven of clubs. And so when you go into the spectral pack, it'll say, okay, of all of those, which is the first? Okay, give me the four of diamonds, polychrome. Well, I don't want four diamonds, so I'm going to sh shuffle things around so that the four diamonds doesn't show up in the spectral pack. Now it's going to give me the next thing in line is six of spades. Well, six of spades is not in the pack, so it's going to give me eight of hearts instead. Well, okay, I don't want eight of hearts, so now we'll shuffle things around so that eight of hearts doesn't show up. So now it's not four of diamonds, not six of spades, not eight of hearts. Now it's seven of clubs instead. And so, you know, if you, that's how we were able to get the polychrome card onto the card that we wanted. We, I just tried it. It gave me a card that I didn't want, so I removed that. I tried it again, gave me a different card that I didn't want, so I removed that, tried it again. And through, you know, trial and error here, I found that this gave me the seven. All right, now back to shopping. So let's go re-roll. Judgment So I have the judgment and the juggler I want so instead of spending money on the juggler I'm just gonna use the judgment to get the juggler um, and then after that I'm going to reroll again Buying uh, this zany joker and We have the series here. So this is what I was saying before we have uh, Telescope is giving us series every time in our celestial packs. There are some sort of naturally occurring ones. All right, so we'll go series, celestial, series. Actually, now I'm realizing, uh, you know, like I said, this is not the first take. I've attempted to record this a couple other times and you know, it's like a two hour long lecture or whatever and I keep, you know, running into mistakes. Um, 
Here's the thing about the uh, telescope. You know, so we'll go here, we got the telescope voucher. So the way it works is uh, in a celestial pack, normally there's, let's say, three planet cards. And it says, okay, well, give me what the next three planet cards are. And if there's any repeats, then we'll just skip and you'll give me the next, next one or something like that. When you have the telescope, it will say, okay, in the first slot, that one will force to be series and then add in what are the next cards in line. So I'm actually, instead of generating three planet cards, I'm only generating two planet cards. Series stays, give me two other different ones. And you know, when it does that, there are going to be sort of naturally occurring series cards, planet cards that show up. And what we want is we want those series cards to show up in the shop, not in the pack. Because if there is an extra series card that shows up in the pack, you know, let's say I open the celestial pack before I did my reroll, then that extra series card gets skipped and it's gone forever. We can't get it back. And so that's why reroll first, buy the series card after I have obtained the series card, open the celestial pack for another other series card. And you can also see here we've got zero dollars left, so the money is very tight. You know, we bought the blueprint here, uh, we, you know, spent money on rerolls, we spent money on booster packs, you know, even though we're getting money from the delayed gratification, uh, this is a very tight padding that we're doing. All right, next here with the help from the juggler, uh, look at all these eights that I was able to manipulate into my hand here. Uh, I've got tens, eights, and twos, so I can play flushes. Like I said, we want to try to play as many four of, or as many full houses and flushes as we can early, saving the pairs for later when our pairs are worth more points or when our flushes are worth too many points. We want to stop playing flushes. A uh, quick swap here before we play these. And even though I have the blueprint on the eight ball, instead of generating two tarot cards, I'm going to hold the fool here for reasons. All right, the fool gives us, well, sorry. The next tarot card that we get is temperance. And so I held on to the Fool so that I could copy the Temperance. I could use the Fool to get another series card, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this Temperance instead. And, okay, you know, one reason for that is, you know, when we get to the end, money is very tight. We have exactly enough money to do exactly what we want to do in order to, for example, the Wheel of Fortune. The first wheel that shows up is something like, uh, you know, tarot card 160 or something like that. So I have to get through 160 tarot cards before the first wheel shows up. And then, you know, I have to somehow get to the fifth wheel. Uh, same thing with the jokers. You know, I'm going through and whatever jokers that I'm looking for, I have to spend a lot of money on rerolls and get those eventually. So money is tight. I want to make sure I have enough money to get all of the things that I want. Let's say, you know, let's say that wasn't the concern. Let's say I have this question of, in general, if I had an uh, unlimited amount of money or, you know, a, a reasonable amount of money, um, is it better to have $20 or is it better to have a series card? Series card, you know, leveling up our flush house so that could potentially raise our score in the end. Or with $20, I could get some extra rerolls. With the extra rerolls, I can buy some extra planets. With the extra planets, I can then level up my constellation even more. And so, you know, let's play this game of if I have level 20 flush house, if I get another one, if I go from 20 to 21 flush house, what percentage does that actually increase my score? You know, is that like a 10% boost? Probably not. Is that a 5% boost? Kind of, close to that, right? And compared to if I have $20 worth of rerolls and that buys me, let's say, two planet cards, 
non-series cards, just two random planet cards. And that levels up my constellations, two different constellations leveled up. Is that going to be 5% or 10% or potentially more? Turns out the money is better. But also I just need the money in order to buy the stuff that I want. So uh, here we go, we've got the Temperance, Fool, Temperance again. And then I'm gonna sell this Zany Joker. So that's why, that's why I bought the Zany Joker is because uh, it costs $4. That gives me, with two Temperance, an extra $4. Sell the Zany Joker, get back $2. So I spent $4, I got $6. Uh, you know, minor optimizations like that because like I said, money is so tight in this run. All right, we've got uh, eights. Before I play them, let's put them over here. Eights with fives for the full house. Ah, my, uh, like I said, I've already been attempting to do this for a couple hours and my throat is uh, ravaged. So uh, give me a second here. All right, let's uh, get rid of nine and four. And we'll make a gold four. Um, I am going for, you know, these tens and eights. And so I'm getting rid of my nines. I already lined up some of my nines to be deleted by the immolate. And so I'm just getting rid of, getting rid of the last nine here. Um, between uh, these other cards here, I had a reason for deleting a four, uh, but I forgot now. Whatever, we get rid of a four. Maybe I'll remember later. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, let me just double check, make sure I did that correctly. Uh, so this is what I was saying, uh, with the uh, eights and tens compared to the eights and sevens, here in this round, I swapped around a 10 at the beginning to set up the eights and tens for the next round. In this round, I play eights and sevens. In the next round, eights and tens. In the next, next round, eights and sevens again, you know, alternating like that. Okay, uh, in the shop, we're offered the crystal ball. So this is another one of those things we were talking about, uh, you know, what do we want to search for? If I have two copies of Blueprint to go with my eight ball, that could potentially give me three tarot cards at a time. But that only works if I have the crystal ball where I actually have room for three cards at a time. And so we have this question of, should we add that to our search criteria? Uh, only seeds that have not just telescope, but also crystal ball. Uh, we said, mm, we don't need the crystal ball. It's nice if we do get the crystal ball, but we don't need it. So we're not gonna put that on our search filter criteria, but if we do get it, turns out that's nice. So, you know, another one of the other hundred different things that we ended up just getting lucky with this seed, this seed does have the crystal ball and we're gonna use the hell out of it. All right, we got the crystal ball. Uh, I want to, now we're gonna start doing some weird stuff with the uh, shop queue. So I want to, for example, buy this half joker. You know, this is not helping me score. You know, with my flush houses, this gives me no benefit. Um, if I'm playing pairs, um, I don't want to get plus 15 molt. I want to get less points so that I don't accidentally over score. Um, but having this half joker means as I go through my shop rerolls, there will be a half joker that could come up, but it gets skipped instead. And so that shifts all of the jokers forward in the queue. Uh, so let's hear, uh, buy the half joker, reroll. Gratification, this spectral pack has ectoplasm, gives me a negative gratification. If I sell it, then I don't get negative gratification. Uh, I get negative Todd instead. And I'm gonna pick up this uh, face here. So just like with the half joker, then there's gonna be a face card later that gets skipped. 
Uh, also, uh, we could have sold the gratification earlier because, um, you know, I could have sold it before re-rolling, but I re-rolled first and then sold it. Uh, the reason for that is there is a gratification that gets skipped. All right, let's... Venus, I don't need. Uh, I'll pick it up, you know, later once I have my constellation for now. We'll just re-roll. Here's another series that shows up. So re-roll first, buy the series, then after, get the celestial pack. So series, holding on the celestial pack. Now that there's a Uranus here, there would be another Uranus card, you know, here with this mega celestial pack. First slot has to be series, but there's four other planets. The extra Uranus is going to be skipped. We'll open, we'll, now we've got exactly $20. We'll use the Hermit. And here's that Spectral Pack. All right, don't mind me doing a little bit of shuffling here. We'll make another gold card, and I want it to be here for reasons. Uh, let's see here, this eight, we'll move it to the right. This eight of spades, we'll put it here. And then the sevens, I want it to be looking like that. And then, uh, you know, we could take immolate for the money here, but I want this ectoplasm to give me as many negatives as possible. There's our negative Todd. Couple more re-rolls. And now that I have an extra Joker slot, I can pick up Jimbo. All right, in the next round, we'll go five on the left, five ace, ace, Four, four. Now we don't have the gratification, so we don't have to worry about discards. We can go ahead and discard these as long as I've got the order correct. Uh, two of clubs, we'll put it here. And we'll go ahead and play those. Uh, these I don't need. Seven on the right. So I'm just setting up my sevens for the future. All right, 10, these I'm discarding. Now we've got the first opportunity to start making lucky cards. Potentially giving us money. No, for sure, they're gonna give us money and we're gonna make copies of these eights also. Uh, glass card, there we go, there's our seven. And Empress, I'm gonna hold on to. So with this glass card here, you know, again, with the shuffler manipulation, um, I know what order that the tarot cards are going to show up. I know that the third set of tarot cards or the second set or whatever uh, is going to have the emperor that gives me the justice for the glass card. And so I want to maneuver my seven, my polychrome card into not the starting hand, not the second hand, but into the third hand uh, is what we did here. Uh, then this seven, uh, I don't want to see it for a while. So let's do this. Let's put it on the right and we'll do this. These cards will discard. This seven we'll put here so that I can get it in the future for my flush house. And then with these eights and tens, you know, so what this is saying here is, you know, in the next round of these five cards, these two appear the, I think the earliest, or, you know, that's generally the idea is I've got five cards here. This one ends up somewhere. This one ends up somewhere. This one ends up somewhere. 
and of these three or of these five different cards this second one appears earlier this third one appears earlier so i'm moving the eights into the correct places i don't really care where the tens end up because i've already aligned my sevens All right, more shopping here. Let's sell the half joker. So I already skipped a half joker. You didn't see it, but we skipped a half joker. Uh, picking up this business card, that's gonna be the next card that gets skipped. Let's go re-roll again here. If I open the celestial pack first, this series card gets skipped because this tries to generate uh, planet cards and the next one would be series gets skipped. But if we re-roll first, we can pick up the series card. Uh, we'll go Arcana. Uh, in the Arcana pack, what I want to do is I want to take 8 and 5. This 7, let's go here. 10, let's go there. Because reasons, again. Uh, and then also I've got this hanged man here. So I'm going to take ace and three here. Uh, again, getting rid of our spades, um, getting rid of our aces here. And we are also, uh, we've just got the two threes. So might as well get rid of the last one. And then we've just got the three of clubs, either gold for money or, uh, clubs as part of a flush. Uh, yeah, let me check the order. Looks good. All right, let's re-roll. Now things start to get hard. So I've been using this juggler. You know, we've got the ectoplasm, gave us minus one hand size. Now we've got to lose the juggler so that I can pick up this mad joker. So in order to do the shop queue manipulation that I want, in order to skip certain jokers so that I can get my dusk and my blueprint earlier, I need to have room up here to buy and sell jokers. And if I'm holding on to the juggler, then I'm not able to buy as many. I'm not able to skip as many. And so I got to make room. I got to make room for buying and selling jokers by getting rid of the juggler, which means now we've got seven hand size for the rest of the run. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. Um, let's see here. I want to re-roll and now we've got temperance uh i've made a mistake here i believe ah here it is i was supposed to sell this empress so that now i've got five bucks for my temperance okay no problem we fix it okay it's fine uh here's the temperance gives us 27 dollars, and i could you know use this Fool, I could open the Celestial Pack, get a series card, but I'm going to choose to take the $27 instead. So we'll go uh, Temperance, use the Fool, go ahead, use the Temperance right away, re roll, and then after rolling, we'll do go uh, Celestial. Now, I will point out, uh, I went through it kind of quickly there, but uh, the previous one was bus with the crazy joker and then this one is crazy joker again with the abstract joker and so there's this question of okay if i wanted to just get more skips get the later jokers earlier i could sell one of these for a crazy joker and then that gives me a skip if i buy the crazy joker with the bus and then I get a skip here so the reason why i didn't do that is because I don't just want more skips, I want a specific number of skips. And what I said before uh, is, well, no, in, in a previous recording I said, okay, you know, so I have to say it again. Um, the, the way the shop queue works uh, with the additions is the additions are always in the same place. And so, you know, let's say the, uh, eighth joker is negative 
and the tenth joker is your dusk. Well, then you get some random negative in slot eight, and then you reroll a couple times, and you get some. You get a uh, regular dusk, not negative, as number ten. Now, if you do a skip in the shop, so let's say I buy Todd, and then there's another Todd that gets skipped, then whatever used to be Joker number nine, that becomes number eight. Whatever used to be Joker number ten that becomes number nine. So dusk becomes number nine, a different joker becomes negative. Or if I do another skip, two skips, now that dusk that used to be joker number 10 is now in the slot eight, and then that dusk becomes negative. And so in order for me to get, you know, whatever the naturally occurring negatives are, I want to slide the jokers along so that I get the correct jokers in the negative slot so i get the dusk in the negative slot so i get the constellation as a negative and so here i don't take the crazy joker skip because i already have my negative lined up where i want it to be all right going into the next round Let's go five and ten. Ten, five, ten. All right, so for this round, I set up my sevens previously. So then for the next round, I'm going to set up my tens. All right. Eight and eight. And here we go. Uh, also in the next round, um, as far as like what order the eights go in, I have some eights of clubs and I have some regular eights. And what I wanna try to do is use the eights of clubs for flushes and for my flush house. And I wanna use my regular eights for two pair or use my regular eights for um, full house. So what I'm doing here with these sixes and eights of these five cards, I'm moving these two eights here because these two cards end up together. And so, you know, instead of me getting a uh, six and eight together, now I'm gonna get an eight and eight together. I want my non-clubs eights to happen together. All right, I can make another lucky eight and I can use the hermit here this is fine I don't need to rearrange it okay and I can even make another lucky eight if I want uh, and get rid of this justice here. Uh, I already have the glass seven. I don't need any more glass cards. Um, I actually just need the money. All right, uh, you know, this looks good here. I've got my flush house, my eights and sevens. Uh, before I do this, actually, you know, instead of getting the plus six dollars here, I'm gonna discard this three. All right, I know that looks crazy. Uh, but you know, here's kind of what's happening. Um, we are in a, we're currently on the big blind. We're going into the water next. In the water, remember, we don't have any discards. And so when I play five cards, I said I can sort of switch around internally here. I can manipulate these five cards and swap around. Seven becomes an eight, eight becomes a seven. Um, but I'm not able to get, you know, a 10 in here. I'm not able to get an extra eight in here. And so that gives me some limitations on where the cards can end up. And so what that looks like is, you know, maybe in the next round, this is card number four, this is card number seven, this is card number uh, 19, this is card number two or something like that. And, you know, it could also be the case that none of these or you know all of these end up at the bottom of the deck you know this is card 
23 and 25 and 19 and you know 31 and 17 or something like that and so what you can do is if you discard more cards or if you play more cards or less cards or whatever like that then my five card hand is then different you know ends up in a different place so you know play discarding the three and then playing this after doing that discard is kind of like swapping one of these cards into the place that the three would have been. Kinda is what's happening. I know it lo looks weird. Trust me, I tried all the possibilities and uh, you know, I wasn't able to make it work except for exactly this. Uh, it hurts me too. It hurts me losing the three dollars. Uh, also, you know, some consideration for, okay, if I go back in the history, if I go to the previous two or three or five rounds, can I, the two of clubs, can I turn that into a three gold instead? Uh, turns out not. Uh, the, you know, the three turned into a gold card not that long ago. And so, uh, you know, I wasn't able to swap it into the two spot. Okay, in the shop here, let's go Arcana first, I guess. Uh, swap here the 10 so that I can make another 7 here. So I already have the 10s of clubs. I'm not going to use any more moon cards. I'm not going to make any more clubs, so let's get rid of the extra 10. Uh, to create an extra seven um, I can take this six. I want it to be on the right and I think this is the correct order now. Okay um, Let's pick up the hermit Get rid of Jimbo here and then we're gonna buy this constellation. Okay before we buy the constellation We're gonna do this We're gonna go into the collection and we're gonna set up the the white whale duplication here and previously we set up the blueprint and in my explainer video sort of explaining how this white whale bug works some of the limitations of it if I open up my collection and I go to the blueprint again then it breaks the you know whatever bug that we set up it breaks the setup um, and so then it'll block the duplicate uh, blueprint again. So what I need to do, if I want to set up my constellation, I need to somehow go to the page that has the constellation on it, but I need to avoid the page that has the blueprint on it. Uh, blueprint is on page two, constellation is uh, page three. So we'll go uh, to the left here. And then so here's the constellation. I did not see the blueprint. So if I close this now, I have blueprint is set up to duplicate and also at the same time constellation is set up to duplicate. So, you know, kind of lucky here getting for this seed, you know, something that's kind of lucky about it. Not only do we have two copies of constellation that just show up, but they show up in the appropriate order that I'm able to then duplicate both the eight or the blueprint and the constellation. Uh, I'll also say um, this, you know, sort of the original version of the white whale bug, you open the collection, you look at the card and then that enables the duplication. Um, you know, we had a couple of discord users figure that out, you know, the same people that did the seed searcher. Uh, a different discord user um, also credited in the uh, description of the, uh, the gameplay video. Uh, was able to figure out what I call the uh, rotisserie white whale, which is you do the white whale uh, bug, but you do it by navigating the uh, collection in the opposite direction to avoid uh, repeating that page and breaking the blueprint setup. So, you know, they figured this thing out and then, okay, now that they figured this out, now we're gonna use it. I can figure out how to duplicate as many jokers as possible not just the blueprint and the dusk but blueprint constellation and dusk and stencil we were able to figure it out 
All right, now that we have the constellation, we can start picking up planets. So we'll take this Mars. I'm not gonna use it right away because I wanna hold it to you know potentially do skips. Um, so here's re-roll for Mercury, re-roll twice. We set up the blueprint, so here it is. I can sell the face to pick up the blueprint, sell the world to make room for my Neptune, and before I use these, I can get, here is my second constellation that, that shows up. So, you know, what it looks like in the Joker queue is it's blueprint, then constellation, then dusk. And so that's why we need to sort of separately set up the duplication for the blueprint and the constellation. Uh, blueprint I want over here. Uh, constellation I can go and pick up now and now that I have both constellations we will use our planets uh, first we'll go celestial so you know whatever ones of these I think it's a mercury that gets skipped but there's some card that gets skipped if I hold on to these and I open this celestial pack we'll go series we'll go Neptune We'll go Mercury, and I'm gonna hold on to this Mars card. I'm not gonna use it right away. I'm gonna tell you why in a bit, but we're gonna hold on to that one. Um, and then I think that's it. Now I'm going to go without buying this Dusk. Yeah, that's it. So here's why. Uh, if we go to the collection here, we've got uh, Dusk shows up on page three, and we also said, you know, there's two stencils, and the stencil shows up on page one. So if I want to do the duplication bug, let's go page three, setting up Dusk, okay, by the Dusk, okay, and then later on there's a stencil that shows up. And so to do the stencil, we'll go, uh, you know, Jokers, and then pick up the stencil here. And then, okay, that's fine. I can close this. Now I've got stencil set up, dusk set up. I was able to set up the stencil without setting up or without breaking the dusk. So it seems like that's fine. Uh, it turns out this is not what you want to do because, you know, as part of my shop manipulation, moving the correct jokers into the correct negatives, right? So there's naturally occurring negatives in the shop and I want to move the correct joker into the negative slot by not picking up the dusk here that enables me gives me the dusk later that I can move into the negative spot that's the idea uh, so pass on this dusk there's two more dust there's three total dusk three total stencil on the seed you know we search for seeds that have two dusk Turned out this one had three, somewhat fortuitous, you know, like all the other lucky things that happened with this seed. All right, uh, okay, in the next round here, let's go seven, five, eight. Also eight and three, looks like that. Yeah, just double checking here. I want to have my eights in the correct places. All right, uh, I've got Temperance gives me 40 bucks. Fool gives me another 40 bucks. And then before I use this Temperance, I'm going to use the Mars first. And then use Temperance here. I, I promised you I would tell you why in a second here let's just make uh four goes here this is eight eight two goes here and four so i'm just moving my eights into the correct places all right so this is what happened the tarot cards are fool then temperance then fool again so if i'm empty and i generate three tarot cards what it'll do is it'll give me okay fool and then Temperance, and then because I already have a Fool, it'll give me the next card, which is Empress. So if I want to get both Fool cards, I need to separate them. And so what we what we did is, by holding on to the Mars card, generate only two cards. Generate Temperance and Fool, and then the next Fool happens in the next 
trio of uh, tarot cards. So that I get both fools. Um, I can sell these and I can use this fool to get my temperance. All right, let's see here. Uh, seven and six looks like this. Um, so, you know, I have to waste a hand here because I don't have any discards. I have to waste a hand and I set it up so that I get uh, a trio of sixes here. So, you know, for, remember, we're still trying to do this telescope stuff here. Um, I don't want to play a pair here and not be able to play a pair of eights later if I play too many pairs. So I'm going to play a three of a kind because I don't plan on playing very many three of a kinds. Um, and so that's how I set this up here. And then let's see here. This goes here. This goes there. I can play these. All right, so once again, I am holding on to a tarot card. So instead of generating three new ones, I only generate two. But it's worth it because now after the round, I'm going to buy more jokers um, or also I'm going to use an ectoplasm to get another negative. So my temperance will be worth more money. I generate less tarot cards, but I get an extra $10 from my temperance card. So it ends up being worth it to hold it until after the round. All right, so let's be careful here. Uh, we'll go surplus voucher series. Reroll. All right, so here is that stencil showing up. Um, and what I said in the, you know, it, when trying to set up the duplication here, uh, the dusk and the stencils, they're alternating. So it's dusk, stencil, dusk, stencil, dusk, stencil. If I pick up the stencil now and then set up the duplication, then when I get the dusk and I go to set up the duplication for the dusk, then this stencil breaks it. Uh, or opening the collection and seeing the stencil here is gonna break the setup for the stencil. So what I need to do is I need to find later on dusk first and then stencil. So I'm not gonna pick up this stencil here. Also uh, with the stencil, uh, I've got uh, again with the shop manipulation with holding buying and selling random jokers to sort of move the shop queue along and you know cause skips and stuff like that uh, i need space i need joker slots that i can actually buy and sell if i buy this stencil now then i only have one slot left over to buy and sell things and i'm not able to do as much manipulation as i want so we'll save the stencil for later um, the other stencil i think uh, starts out as joker number 140 or something like that so think about this. Think about in a normal game that you play, how many jokers do you see? You know, you see probably like 30, 50 jokers. You never see the 100th joker. You never see the 150th joker. But on this particular seed, with the help of all of the money generation from the eight ball and the uh, extra temperance cards, we're able to do some absurd like 90 rerolls or something like that. All right, uh, what else did I want to try to do here? Okay, so I want to, we did the re-roll. That was the thing. And then now let's go spectral. All right, in here, let's go two of clubs, seven, eight, uh, 10, two will turn into gold. I've got it all written down. So, you know, trust me, we've got it all figured out here. Uh, we get the eights in the appropriate place that we want them. We get the 10 in the appropriate place that we want it. We get the gold card in the appropriate place that we want it. Um, and then after all of that shuffling around, let's go ectoplasm, giving us another negative constellation. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and since I have this negative slot now, I can buy this scholar. 
Um, if I want, I can sell this moon and I can use this temperance for, like I said, gives us extra money now that I have an extra negative and an extra joker. Um, I do want to make sure, sorry, I was showing the collection uh, with the scholar. I want to make sure I didn't accidentally set up a duplication with the scholar. And so after buying it, I'll do that. That way we're clear with the scholar. Because I want to use this to skip. I don't want to use this for duplication. Okay, uh, Arcana pack next. I told you I was saving the temperance to get you know more money from the temperance. Um, I used it so that here I have the fool to give me another one. Before I do that, let's move this two in the correct place. Uh, by the way, now we've got hand size six since I use ectoplasm twice. So now it's getting a little bit harder to do things like, you know, if I want to play a five card hand full house, if I want to play a five card hand flush, now I don't have as much room to do that. And so that's another reason why earlier on in the run, do flush houses and uh, full houses and flushes while you can. Later on in the run, when you have a smaller hand size, that's when we're going to start playing pairs. All right, let's go re-roll once and twice. And assuming that we did this correctly, I can sell the business card for another copy of Jimbo. We had him, he went away, he came back. Uh, here we've got Hermit before we use our Temperance. Uh, re-roll, I can get rid of this Mad Joker for this misprint. I can re-roll two times getting rid of the scholar for a blackboard. And then for my constellations, we'll level up with Uranus. Reroll once, twice, abstract. And okay. After that, finally, now we do have the $50 temperance no egg, just all negatives. We get the $50 temperance. Also here, I wanna make sure I move my blackboard to the left. Um, you know, here I've got plus four is not a lot, but plus four and then times two could have an influence. Uh, same with my misprint here. You know, it could randomly give me plus 16. I wouldn't want it to be times two. Uh, I think that's it for this shop. All right, let's take a look at the next round here. Uh, swap some twos for reasons, I guess. Uh, play the eights here. Okay, so here's something to consider, something to keep in mind. Now that I have this blackboard, this is gonna start doubling my score, unless I have red cards in hand. And so, you know, as part of our shuffler manipulation, not only do I wanna set up my hands, but I wanna have you know, these red cards left over. So with five cards, five card hand plus an extra red card, that is then, you know, another layer difficult to set up our hands. So maybe it's not always feasible for us to do the five card hands and, you know, even more reason to save our pairs uh, for later. Also then, you know, if the hands are worth more points later on now, then when I play this two pair here, All right, that's already, uh, you know, 2,300 points for two pair. If I were to do something like play a flush or play a full house, that could take me over. And if I score too many points, I don't get to use all of my hands. Let's sell these I don't need. Um, I shuffled the sevens around so that I could do this. You know, I knew that the second hand was going to give me the strength card, and so I wanted my sevens to be in that second hand. All right, before I play these, uh, I'm gonna use my lucky card like this. Keeping the red card in hand so I don't score too many points. Four of diamonds, 
over here, eights and sixes with a leftover five. All right, so, you know, just like that, one hand is worth, you know, 2,100, 2,300 points. If I didn't have the red card, if it was doubled, if it was 4,000 points, even like 3,500 points, that's only two hands, and then I go over 7,000. And so we wanna make sure we have our red cards. Uh, let's get rid of the moon and the empress. We don't need lovers. We don't need this judgment. I'm gonna use it by we'll get rid of jimbo here and then we'll get this business card uh by the way you know it's ancient history uh now but on the psychic you know the anti-2 boss you know we bought the zany joker we did the temperances and then i sold the zany joker uh the reason why i sold the zany joker instead of holding on to it is because I wanted to play a full house and the zany joker would have taken us over on the score and so that's why I needed to sell it. Uh, okay here we've got ace, seven, six, four, keeping this five, five I can swap and then now we're getting into the end game here. Okay so I got my eight. Tens and eights, I've got my flush house. I got my three for an extra three bucks here. Uh, before I do this, let's grab one of these tens and move it over here. Again, just maneuvering my eights into the correct spot. Uh, I don't know how long we've recorded so far and I don't know how long this video is going to be You know probably somewhere in the ballpark of two hours, maybe uh, But I'll tell you we are halfway through uh, The document that I wrote up ten pages of notes what actions to take at what time and then we'll see You know how long it ends up being uh, so here is that dusk showing up if I bought the first dusk and then I tried to do you know the copy of the dusk then I can, I can get this uh, negative dusk here, no problem, but then I'm not able to get the stencils that I want later. And so that's why we skipped the first dusk. Also, uh, the other dusk that shows up is the one that we're gonna make that second dusk negative. So if I bought the first dusk and this second dusk negative, then the third dusk doesn't get to be negative, the third dusk doesn't show up. So that's why we skipped the first dusk. But I am uh, prepared to take this. We'll do Celestial Pack first. Uh, this time I want to buy the Celestial Pack before doing my rerolls because uh, I want to, I don't want to do any skips uh, because I know that there's a series card coming up soon. And if I skip into it, then that series card will be skipped. And so I want to open the Celestial Pack first. Uh, before I pick up this Dusk, we'll set up the duplication here. So we'll go to our collection. Here is the Dusk. And then we can buy this negative Dusk. All right. Reroll. Uranus. Reroll. Business card for a list. Reroll series. Reroll. There would have been another list, but it gets skipped. Now that that skip has already occurred, I can sell the list, pick up the stencil. Before I pick up the stencil, let's set up our duplication. Since I am on the first page here, the dusk is not disrupted. Pick up the stencil. Okay, that's it for the white whale duplication bug. Everything's set up. We don't have to worry about messing around in the collection anymore. All right, uh, re-roll. Let's make room for our emperor. And then before we open this emperor, we'll open the arcana pack. 
Uh, the reason for that is there is a uh, magician in here as one of the next uh, tarot cards that show up. So I want to hold the magician while I open the pack here. If I sold the magician to use the emperor, then it would just give me another magician. Uh, okay, I want to do strength. So eventually I want my sevens to become nines, sevens and nines for my uh, final hand. Uh, turning this ace into a two gets rid of the last ace in my deck and I have a pair of twos or I have five twos if I want or I have more clubs there. Uh, let's see here. Any other things that I need to do? Let's make a... So before I make this lucky, let's use the emperor first. Okay. Then we can go lucky. I don't need this hierophant. Uh, for this getting rid of my spades, right? Because now we have the uh, blackboard. Now I want to get rid of my black cards so that the blackboard won't activate, right? I want to keep my red cards, get rid of my black cards. So let's get rid of this four of spades. All right, after doing that, then we can do some shuffling again so we'll go two here six here swap that around there we go um you know question why make this 10 lucky instead of making another eight lucky you know what we want to do is we want to uh, play as many eights as we can so you know potentially if we're playing all of our eights then they all become lucky eights um now that i have access to dusk i want as many lucky cards in my final hand as possible. And now that I've turned my sevens into eights, really my flush house is only tens. And so my final hand will always be tens. Let's make those tens into lucky so that though with the dusk and then eventually the second dusk will copy that lucky effect, hoping to get as much money as we can. Eh, let's see here. Mm. Temperance, right? 50 bucks. Sorry, just checking the notes here, making sure I've got everything lined up correctly. Uh, before we leave the shop here, let's re-roll one, two, three, four times. Buy and use this Jupiter. And then also sell this abstract. So a couple things that are happening here. First, I'll tell you uh, with the re-rolls. Um, you save money if you spread out your rerolls. So instead of doing 20 rerolls in one shop, if you do 10 and 10, or you know, even better, you do like uh, you know, three, three and three, or something like that. Spread out your rerolls. And so I have more money. I could do more rerolls, but I want to spread them out. Do eight rerolls, eight rerolls, nine rerolls. You know, something like that. Spread them out so that I save money overall. And so that's why we, you know, just burn a some extra rerolls, plus four rerolls, but not any more than that. Now, the reason why I'm gonna sell this abstract, uh, one, you know, when we get to the final scoring, you know, you saw with the holographic card, uh, the extra molt from the holographic card doesn't matter, you know, after we've already done all of our glass polychrome cards. And so the same thing with the abstract joker, it doesn't contribute anything. Um, what it does do now is, it makes all of my hands, you know, with all of these jokers, plus 22 molt, it makes all of my hands too powerful. If I get too many points, then the round ends. I don't get to play all of my eights. So it's too powerful. I got to get rid of it. I'm scoring too much. Um, also, you know, this question of, well, if we're just going to get rid of it, you know, I bought this last round. I just bought it and now I'm going to sell it. Why buy it and then sell it right away? Well, in the shop, there's, after this abstract joker, there's uh, two more abstract jokers that show up, uh, you know, in the next 10 to 20 jokers or something like that. So having this abstract joker for the eight or nine rerolls then skips those two abstract jokers that would have been in the shop. So that's why we hold it so that we can get those skips. Once we got those skips, I know there's no more abstract joker for a while, so I can safely get rid of it it's not going to give me any more skips
All right, in the next round, uh, you know, we're kind of lucky here. You know, now that we've got only 31 cards in the deck, we don't always need to do the crazy shuffle manipulation. I could just play these like that. Plus five from the misprint here. All right. Mm, some stuff. We've got a lucky card here. We've got a world card. I've got another judgment. And so let's go get rid of the misprint, use the judgment. And so, you know, that's, you know, just give me the next joker that would be the shop, you know, give it to me now instead. And so these judgments are kind of acting like a reroll. Instead of spending $10 on a reroll, spend, you know, the $2 on a judgment. Um, also here demonstrating now my joker slots are all full. You know, I've got this blackboard, I've got the, uh, blueprint and the eight ball. I've got the stencil. I've only got one slot here where I can sort of buy and sell and manipulate the, uh, shop. And so that is part of why I want my stencil to happen later. Don't buy the early one, buy the later one. Okay, let's go eights and fives also the misprint that we sold the next thing the misprint was going to give us was plus 18 plus 18 is bad that's too much uh you know for my full house here so getting rid of that misprint okay we dodged a bullet there Uh, that's worth 2,000 points. If we didn't have the red two, 4,000 points with the blackboard. All right, next, what are we looking at here? Uh, I've got an eight that I want to put over here. I've got a seven that I want to swap with this two. And I'm just going to go ahead and discard these. I don't want to play the glass eight because I don't want it to break. Uh, eight on the six, discarding. All right, now my last lucky 10. Sorry, I should show the deck every once in a while. Oh, sorry, there's one more uh, 10, but here I've got two lucky 10s now. Uh, let's see here, we did the lucky 10. Let's get rid of these. Eights, five and two. Okay, now I don't worry about the red card because I got plenty of points left over here. All right. Um, let's make another seven. Uh, I don't need to use this devil because, you know, I only have six. Uh, my hand size is six anyway. I can only have one gold card anyway. I already have three of them. So we'll go ahead and sell that now. Uh, discard these sevens. There is my flush house. Um, I want to do it this way so that, you know, in the next round, what I want is I want the tens to happen later in the round. So I don't have a 10 and I have to hold on to it. I want to have just draw it later. And I want the eights to draw them earlier. So we'll put the 10 over here, draw the eights earlier, and then move the 10 later. All right, uh, let's see here. Get rid of Lovers and Moon. This half joker, uh, there would have been a half joker here, but we already skipped it, which means we can go ahead and sell this. And now reroll twice, picking up this strength here. Notice there's a second golden joker. And so what I said before about you know, with the crazy joker. And I said, I didn't want to pick up the crazy joker. I didn't want the extra skip so that I have my negatives lined up correctly. Same thing here. So I've already done all of the shop manipulation that I need to do. And I don't need any more skips. If I get more skips, then it'll be misaligned. And then I will miss the negative on my dusk. Something else will be negative. So I don't want to buy the golden joker. I don't want to skip the golden joker. 
Uh, I already have things lined up. All right, we can take Mercury. So here's that half joker. The reason why I sold the half joker at the beginning is so that this would not be skipped because again, I want it to line up just perfectly, all of those negatives. Uh, I can buy, but I'm not gonna use it yet. The series card. Here is the egg. Reroll twice. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and open the Celestial Pack and I'll tell you this, I'll tell you uh, in the Celestial Pack, even though I have the series here, the telescope still forces the first one to be series. It does not negate that, it does not block that. So it's okay to hold on to this series card. And then also potentially, um, I think there's no Pluto in here, but I think there's a Mercury that gets skipped if I hold on to this Mercury card. All right, after that, we can go ahead and we can use the Pluto and we can use the Mercury. And I'm gonna hold on to this series card. I'll show you something kind of neat. Um, also, I'm not going to buy this Mega Arcana Pack. So remember that Mega Arcana Pack, I'll tell you why we don't buy this. All right, in the next round, let's go discard these cards. This is the Seven of Clubs, Glass. This is the Five of Spades, I don't need those. Uh, I've got the strength here, so I knew that I was going to get the strength card from the shop. So then I set up my eights so that I can turn them into nines. Okay, so I've got uh, two nines, two sevens. I just need to make one more nine before we're done here. Uh, I can go ahead and discard. This is a seven of clubs, another glass card. Uh, this is the uh, five of hearts here. And I'll go ahead and use this series card. All right, so this is what we did. Uh, when we were in the shop, we had the series card. We had the Celestial Pack give us another series card. Uh, I did not use the series card. I waited until now. And the reason for that is if I play this 8-8, eight, eight, uh, this is a six of spades here. I get a fool. And so what I wanted is to copy the series with my fool card. Uh, you know, if I use the series in the shop and I use the strength after, then this fool will give me uh, strength instead of series. Or I could potentially, I could use the hermit and then use the fool to get a second copy of the hermit. So question, is it better to do a series card or $20 here? Earlier on, I said the answer was take the money instead of the series card because earlier on, I wanted the money so that I could re-roll more earlier so I could get my blueprint earlier so that I could make more tarot cards in the long run. Now, I'd rather have the series card, right? If I have $20 that I'm gonna spend on re-rolls, what am I re-rolling for anyway? I already have the jokers set up that I want. Um, what I really want is I want more series cards. All right, so let's go, let me try to remember what order to do this. So I have my jokers set up here, so I want to sell the judgment. This egg is gonna give me a few skips that I already calculated ahead of time. Uh, I could go ahead and use the fool, and I'm gonna use hermit first, series second because now when I do here eights and twos, okay, so double check here, we've got six on the two pair, we've got six on the full house, five on the flush, saving our pairs for later. All right, that two pair is worth 4,000 points. I get another fool, I get another hermit. So remember back in the shop, the shop had a mega arcana pack if I open the Mega Arcana Pack, 
instead of giving me fool hermit judgment fool hermit it will give me only one fool only one hermit and i can't do both in the arcana pack you have to pick one fool or hermit and so by not opening the arcana pack by waiting i was able to get both fools and both hermits instead of having to just pick one out of the four all right now we can tower fool uh, again here using hermit first and then series after this doesn't really matter there isn't going to be a fool that comes up for a while um, all right then i'm going to play here's eights and then a six Uh, let's see here get rid of the chariot and the empress all right this I happen to know this is my uh, vanilla seven of clubs with my three of clubs here so now I have the glass sevens all of my regular sevens have become eights I even uh, got rid of my last three turning into a four if I wanted to play uh, two pair with fours or three fours or, or something like that all right, now that I have these nice gold cards, uh, goodbye. Goodbye gold cards, uh, goodbye six and two. Uh, it may not look like it, but this is my flush house. So again here, you know, some limitations on this shuffler manipulation. You know, it's hard enough. It's hard enough to already get my flush house as the final hand. So it just so happened that the gold cards happen before the flush house happens and then you know when i discarded the four of clubs and the two clubs that means you know if i want to do some kind of shuffler manipulation shuffler manipulation i can swap that two clubs with the four clubs i can swap those gold cards but i can't move those gold cards and so if i have six cards and i play the five card full house with a gold card left over then this card whatever it is left over doesn't get to move it doesn't get to swap around and so i wasn't able to get a gold card here what i am going to do is this 10 i'm going to move over here again you know, I want my 10s to happen later in the round. I want my 8s to happen earlier in the round. All right, uh, it's a marathon here, uh, you know, for you folks watching at home and then also for me recording this. You know, I'm surprised we made it this far with as few mistakes as possible. We're in anti-5 now. We're in the home stretch. We've got uh, just three pages left of my notes document. All right, so what do we want to do? First thing, we're going to open the Arcana pack. I want to sell all of these things. Okay, I definitely don't need those. Strength, I don't need. I've already turned my sevens into eights. I've already turned my glass into my sevens and nines. Um, let's maneuver some stuff around. Uh, four two now these two let's make into glass now I've done it now I've got all of my cards I got my three nines my two sevens I don't need any more death cards so I can with the help of this grabber I can start making more eights playing more pairs of eights uh, let's see here so I did the arcana pack let's Reroll, picking up a Saturn here. Reroll one, two, three, four times. This was going to be a second Saturn, I believe, but now it's a Mars instead. Reroll by Uranus. Reroll two more times. And then now, when I open this Celestial Pack, there would be another Saturn that gets skipped. This Jumbo Celestial Pack. 
And so, you know, like I said, there's a drought. You know, if we're looking at the planet cards, there's Saturn, Mars, Uranus. Uh, in the shop right now is a Jupiter. Where are the series cards? There's a big gap in between series cards. So I want to skip as many as possible to find those naturally occurring series cards. And then after this, the order that I use my planets doesn't matter because I know that there's not going to be a fool for a while. Pick up this grabber. All right, uh, three rounds, four rounds, three and a half rounds left. This goes not all the way on the right, but goes right there. Or is it right here? That looks correct. Hierophant, no. Priestess, yes. I've got eight, six, five, and two. We want to keep the red card here. And I already have all of my polyglass cards, so I don't need to make another copy with death. I can go ahead and just discard these. All right, now we're at a critical juncture here. So one thing we could do uh, I want to make more eights, right? I already have my sevens and nines. I want to make more eights with my grabber. If I have nine eights, that's only four pairs. So one more eight takes me to five pairs. Perfect, right on time with my grabber. Now, uh, you know, normally what you would want to do is you want to make more lucky cards, you know, because more lucky cards, potentially you play them and you get money from them. Uh, here's why I don't want to do that. That's actually bad for us. Because when the lucky card procs, it gives you the plus 20 molt, okay, times three, times three again, potentially times two again. And so when you get a lucky card proc, that's it, the round's over. Uh, it ends it early, and then, you know, we're overscoring. So I want to have a mix of lucky and non lucky cards. So I have this option play lucky later on in the round or you know play lucky when it's safe to play it and then play non-lucky cards when it's not safe so have that option to mix those up so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to use death to make uh, a eight of hearts instead uh, also with the blackboard here you know we want to have red cards in hand so that our blackboard is disabled. And so having a red eight specifically, that gives me a card where I can hold on to it. You know, I want to have eights, so I'm gonna hold on to my eights. And if I have a red eight, then that prevents my blackboard from going off. All right, so after doing this, I can go ahead and do nine, eight. So play the eights here, sneak in a nine. Oh man, my throat is really messed up now. Hold on a second. All right, we're back. Okay, let's use the Hermit here. Like I said, there's no Fool that's gonna come up for a while. Um, I don't need Moon. I have enough clubs. I have enough black cards. Let's play eight, eight with some gold cards. Again here, you know, later on in my deck, I need to get to my tens. So I have to throw away the gold cards so that I can find my tens. Also, now we're at the stage where we're starting to play our pairs. This is why we saved our pairs for later. This pair, by the way, worth, you know, almost 5,000 points, meaning if I didn't have, or yeah, if I didn't have the red cards for the earlier pairs if i play these 5000 point pairs three of those is overscoring if any of my pairs was a flush instead if any of my pairs was a full house instead that is overscoring if i had the abstract joker that is also overscoring 
So we got to be really careful here to play as low points as possible in order to play as many eights as possible. Uh, let's see here. I can finally, this is actually the last 10 that I'm going to make lucky. Use the emperor uh, again here, you know, with the lucky card on the 10. Um, I want to in between in the earlier parts of the round as I'm playing my eights, some of them lucky, some of them not lucky. Um, if too many of them are lucky, then I'm going to hit that plus 20 and then that's going to end the round. So I want my lucky cards to happen at the end of the round to so that I'm safe from them going off when I don't want them to. And then also having uh, the 10 lucky for dusk. All right, so I did that. Uh, then I use the emperor. I'm going to get rid of these to make room for the priestess. And I can go ahead and use these. All right, let's try to find our last 10 here. There it is. You know, we threw away uh, two gold cards, but we were able to find another gold card, no problem. There is our not just another dusk showing up, but a negative dusk, another negative dusk. You know, this negative would have been whatever it was. Uh, I think, let's see here, I think this negative is number 90 something. You know, so the 90-ish, 90th Joker is negative. And then this dusk used to be Joker number, you know, 130 or something like that. So by doing 30 skips in the shop queue, you know, by you know, keeping duplicates to skip the duplicates, we are able to move the 130th card into the 90th card slot, uh, basically. And, you know, not just a high number of skips, skipping 30 jokers or whatever it is, but exactly that many. All right, we can go ahead and buy this. Reroll twice, use the temperance. I'm gonna hold on to this earth card. A couple of rerolls. Uh, is that what I wanna do? Sorry, did I, how many times did I reroll? So uh, I did $4, $5 reroll. That's two rerolls. Six dollar, seven dollar reroll. That's two rerolls. Uh, I think I need one more. Sorry, let me four, five, six, seven. I need the eight dollar reroll. All right, this makes more sense. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we got the, you know, we reroll until we have these cards here. Uh, because now, if I go into the Arcana pack, I've got these. All right, let's get rid of these fives. So five of spades, I wanna get rid of because it's a black card. I wanna keep my red cards. Um, and then if I'm getting rid of a five of spades, might as well get rid of five of clubs. Here, we'll move the seven. Okay, I think we're good there. Sell the chariot to make room for the emperor. Uh, there was some fiddly stuff there with, you know, getting the Emperor and getting these planet cards to line up because I want to be able to uh, buy these planet cards and hold on to the planet cards. And if I'm holding the planet cards, then when I use my Emperor, I don't have room for the Emperor. And so we want to open the Arcana pack uh, before the Celestial pack. Uh, I forgot all of why the sequencing was the way that it was, but that's part of it. You know, I want to be a little bit careful about that. This is the first wheel of the run. Nothing. All right, buy the Neptune card. I don't need this moon card. 
Um, I think in the Arcana pack there was also uh, another moon, and so by rolling into the moon and then uh, opening the Arcana pack, then it's going to give us a skip. Uh, after this, let's re-roll once, twice, second stencil shows up, so we can go ahead and get rid of this egg. One, two, three more times, uh, and then we can go ahead and open this celestial pack. And then get rid of all these planets in whatever order we want. All right, in the next round here, you know, sort of standard uh, shuffler manipulation stuff. Uh, I'm glad to have this second eight of hearts. So here I can play an eight of hearts as my pair and then still have an eight of hearts left over for my black bo board. Cell, Justice, and Tower. This is my second wheel. Gives me that holographic stencil that we saw. Alright, let's take this eight over here. So two pairs sneaking in a nine there, still holding on to a eight of hearts. And we made an eight of hearts before, let's make another eight of hearts. For the same reasons as before. Uh, I could make it gold if I wanted to, but I'm going to end up playing it, so there's no sense in making it gold. Uh, I'll just take the two bucks from the devil. Uh, this can go over here, playing now a pair with an eight left over. So, you know, already we're getting up to nine pairs. Uh, we're running out of pairs very quickly here. We're really glad we did not play any pairs in the first half of the run. All right, I don't need any of these. Joker slots are full, so I can't do any judgment stuff. I already have the jokers that I want. I already have the jokers that I need. Uh, nine can go on the right with an eight. And so now we can also, now that I have an extra eight from the death card, you know, 11 eights, I can even play some triples of eights instead of just pairs. All right, uh, we don't need any more lucky cards. All of our cards are lucky, or enough of our cards are lucky already. Priestess for some random planets. And then now, you know, here's really showing us the limitation of, you know, the six hand size here. I need to get my uh, tens and eights here. I'm only holding on to these, I'm only able to discard two cards at a time. But we did get it. We actually got through the whole deck. Um, what enabled us to do that was playing five cards as many times as possible. And, you know, with the help of the double dusk action, we're able to get extra procs here. We get extra $20. All right, next. Uh, I don't really have to worry about buying jokers anymore because I already have the jokers that I want. So we'll just re-roll through. That's one, two, three, four times. Uh, I want to pick up these planets, so we'll get rid of all these tarot cards. Once, twice, by Jupiter. One more, Arcana. 
Okay, what do I want to do here? Uh, I've got an emperor showing up. So let's do that. Let's do emperor stuff. Let's use Jupiter is okay. And Mars is okay. I want to keep the Saturn because the Saturn is going to be repeated. Uh, do I need to do any rearrangement here? Let's double check here. I've got 10 goes there. 8 goes there. Uh, in the next round, I want my lucky cards to happen at the end. So between these two 8s, I want the lucky card to be the one that shows up at the end. All right, um, Celestial Pack, Series, Fool giving me Series, once, twice, okay, now we can go ahead and get rid of all these planets. Ooh, we did it. We're on the plant here. Uh, you know, second to last round. We're almost out. All right, let's go nine, eight, eight, seven, five. Glad we have the red eight here left over. That's worth 5,500 points. If we didn't have the red eight, you know, doubled to uh, 11,000 points. That's right, 11,000 points. You know, we'd only be able to play uh, two or three of those. Hierophant, Empress, this is wheel number three. Uh, I've got some eights here. I'm going to hold the gold card. Tower, Empress, Hermit. And I am safe playing a triple here. Um, I have one more pair that I can play. I have three more hands left, so the next one we'll do a pair. Uh, for now, we'll do the triple, holding the red card here. Oh man, I can feel it. We're so close. Uh, it's getting a lot easier to you know play here now that there's just less stuff going on i don't have to worry about uh shopping as much i don't have to worry about buying and selling jokers uh let's see here strength i don't want lovers i don't want world i'm gonna hold on to for kind of a weird reason uh yeah so let's go here let's go nine seven six four looking for my flush house there's my flush house with the four. Okay, and let's move some things around. So first, I'm gonna hold on to the world card, and if I'm holding on to the world card, I'm only getting two tarot cards, so I might as well uh, put the blueprint on the dusk here, if I want, because now I'll get, uh, for all of my lucky cards, I'll get some extra triggers here. So if you track it here, in the first 12 triggers or whatever it was, uh, or first 16 or something like that, nothing, no money. But then, you know, on number 17 or 18 or whatever it is, we did get the money. And so by uh, copying our dusk for an additional five triggers from our lucky cards, I was able to get one less tarot card plus $20. Great, you know, that's the same as getting a, a Hermit card. Now, you could ask, well, why don't we, you know, use the blueprint and do another Dusk, you know, another five triggers. Well, in the next five triggers, you don't get any more, uh, you know, money, right? Because it's, it's one in 20 chance or one in 25 or, or whatever it is. Sorry, what is it? Yeah, one in 25 chance. So, you know, getting an extra five of them, it ended up not giving us any money. Also this world card is important uh 
All right, so as I'm going through, as I'm doing this shopping stuff here, uh, we've got the overstock. Then we've got Hermit here selling the Hierophant. Uh, I will point out also the uh, my first attempt at this seed. Um, I didn't have enough money to buy the, uh, what was it, the Wasteful Voucher, the Discard Voucher. And so later on, this would be the Wasteful Voucher comes up again. Um, in this new optimized version, uh, because I would picked up the Wasteful Voucher, then instead of getting the Wasteful Voucher here, I get the Overstock. And Overstock means, okay, now with this money that I saved for rerolls, I get to see more cards. I get to, you know, potentially do more stuff. So let's go reroll one, two, three times for this fool. Reroll one, two, three times picking up planets for our constellation. Reroll one, two times. Okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and use this series. I'm gonna use this fool. I'm gonna use this series. And then since I don't have any more series, I used the one that was in the shop. Now in this mega pack, instead of that series being skipped, I was able to re-roll into it first. Celestial pack for another series. And then let's re-roll. Instead of picking up this Mercury, I'm just gonna keep re-rolling. Uh, I will take the Neptune. Reroll one more time, and then here we are. So, you know, as we went through the shop queue here, uh, the reason why I held on to the world, you know, in the previous end of round I got, it was world, strength, and lovers. Um, I wanted the world because the world causes a skip. There's another copy of the world, and I wanted to skip it because I said wheel number uh, four is going to give me uh, my polychrome card, or is it wheel number five or something like that? And then there's another wheel that gives me another polychrome card. So in order to dig into getting you know, the wheel cards, I need that extra skip. And you could, instead of holding on to the world card, you could just you know, make an extra tarot card with the eight ball, and then that would be equivalent. The problem there is we didn't have enough money. And so the only way that we could get enough money in this very last round here was to copy our Dusk and get those extra lucky triggers. So, you know, the money is incredibly tight. Uh, this wheel, I think, gives us nothing. That's number four. Uh, so it's the next two that are going to be polychrome. All right, Arcana Pack. There's nothing that I want here. None of this stuff is useful to me. I'm just opening the Arcana pack so that I can skip ahead in the tarot cards. Cost me eight bucks to do that, but it's worth it. Uh, I will do this swap here. In the next round, uh, you draw into your two sevens early, and I just wanna push it back, turn the seven into a five, get the seven later. And then finally, we'll reroll one more time. Only $2 left, but after selling this world, I have exactly enough money to buy this last series card. And so that's why we didn't buy the Mercury card. We just didn't have enough money. You know, if we had another $2, we could have gotten it. We could have gotten an even higher score, but I think you'll be satisfied with the score that we do get. So going into the final round here with zero dollars. All right, let's go ahead and realign our eight ball, get it into place here. So now, you know, before we play the big hand with all the glass cards, let's play a couple of these. So here's a pair. because now this wheel gives me that polychrome. So 
So I need to use my eight ball in order to get the tarot cards that are going to give me that polychrome. Uh, eight and a two. Notably, we got a red card left over here. So instead of, you know, 14,000 points, that's only 7,000 points. Uh, I don't need any of these. Uh, 10, 8, 8, 2 with a red card left over. Uh, tower, Moon, Sun, I don't need. Play the 8s with a red card left over. Here we are at the end. 8 ball, I'm going to sell it. And then wheel is going to give me polychrome. Uh, that wheel, it would, if I didn't sell the 8 ball, it would give me a polychrome 8 ball. So, mm, you know, it's kind of magical. It's kind of lucky that we got the wheel after we already got to the end of the round, after we were able to sell the 8 ball so that we didn't, you know, get the, we got the polychrome blueprint instead of the polychrome 8 ball by selling the 8 ball. Also, Notice here we got Hangman, Temperance. The last tarot card that we got was the wheel. So if you look at the list of tarot cards, um, the first wheel happens, you know, somewhere like 160 or 170. You got to go through 150 or so tarot cards before you see the first wheel. And then this fifth wheel shows up or sixth wheel or whatever it is, however far we got to go that's something like 210 or 213 or something like that. So you gotta go through all 200 tarot cards in order to get enough wheels in order to get these two polychrome cards. Very, very tight. Uh, what else can we do? We can also do, you know, if you wanna use this temperance, we get a nice amount of money here to end. And now we just need to find our seven or last nine here. There it is. Uh, if you wanted to, you could go like that. Uh, I'm going to discard down. You know, here I got a black card for my blackboard, or I think it's even more satisfying if we just get rid of it. There we go. Uh, what order do the jokers go in? Uh, it matters not a lot, but it does matter a little bit. And so. I want with my dusk, I want to have the blueprints on my dusk, okay. Um, that's it, that's the only thing that matters, is we got blueprint on dusk. Uh, personally, I like this organization here. I like the polychrome cards together. I like this kind of purplish blueprint with the dusk here. And we'll put this ugly stencil, we'll hide it behind Todd here. I think that looks satisfying enough to me. Uh, if I put the stencils together, you can kind of see one through the other. Uh, I kind of hate it. I kind of hate this holographic card. So we'll just hide it over there. And I think the rest of this looks nice. We've got uh, level 23 flush house. We've got, uh, this is uh, 5.3 times on both constellations because we bought them at the same time. Uh, here you can see the final deck. You know, it's just standard uh, eight ball stuff. Let's get the fire started. All right, that's it. We did it. I'm tired. You asked, so I did it. We did it. Here you go. Uh, happy holidays, everyone. <laughs>